the Palm Beach Civic Association brings you Palm Beach TV, the island's only newscast. We're sponsored by the Fortin Foundation of Florida. Our mission is to inform town residents about the unique challenges of island life and to highlight the actions and achievements of our leaders and the dynamic people who live here. Now the news. Welcome to Palm Beach TV, I'm Wendy Rutledge. Many, if not most of you, already recognize the dedicated leadership of the town's mayor, Donnie Moore. But it was in a broader context, with a wider audience and perhaps hundreds of beneficiaries attending, that Donnie Moore was recently recognized for her exceptional good work. The longtime president of the Palm Beach-based Mary Alice Fortin Foundation and mayor of Palm Beach, Danielle Moore, was presented with the Ending Homelessness Award by the Lord's Place at a breakfast held November 17th at the Kravis Center. Today, we pay tribute to her, toward her empathy towards the poor and the homeless. I'm always touched by her sensitivity and understanding of the arcs of one's journey. 15 years of celebrating the mission of this amazing organization. This is such a special event to myself and our family. As a group, we have been trying to help and end homelessness and help so many get back on their feet. No one in our community should be without a roof over their head or a meal on their table. The Lord's Place provides services including housing, employment, and helps with clinical care coordination for men, women, and children in Palm Beach County. Moore's Mary Alice Fortin Foundation stepped forward with a $4 million gift to the agency's Home for Good campaign, which is helping fund an expansion of its main campus in West Palm Beach, renamed the Fortin Family Campus in recognition of the contributions. We love to get involved with organizations like the Lord's Place. They are so creative and all-encompassing, and Diana and her passion um, are just really unbounded in, in Palm Beach County. She's so special, and this agency is so incredibly special and necessary for our county. More than 600 people attended the breakfast, which also included personal stories from residents whose lives were turned around thanks to the agency's work. This is Sally Lewis reporting for Palm Beach TV. Leadership and vision are in no short supply on the island of Palm Beach. Vision that dates all the way back to the earliest settlers on the island. Sally Lewis takes us now to the home of Henry Flagler and shows us the inside of the living history that is Whitehall. To mark the 120th anniversary of Whitehall, Henry Morrison Flagler's home on Palm Beach, the fall exhibition shares the story of Whitehall as a home, a club, a hotel, and a museum. I think if Henry Flagler could come back to life and visit Whitehall today, I think his, his first comment would be, I can't believe how little has changed, which is kind of amazing when you think about it because during its many lives, Whitehall was stripped of most of its contents. And the fact that we've been able to recover them and repatriate them is pretty amazing. The exhibition is divided into three sections. The first deals with the rich symbolism of Whitehall, that it was built to be a home for the muses. The second is about the advanced technology of Whitehall when it was built in 1902. And the third is about its current chapter as a museum. There was a lot of thought and symbolism that went into the building of Whitehall. Any temple to Apollo would face the east, of course, because he was the sun god. So it would face the rising sun, and Whitehall faces the rising sun. As you approach it, there's one wide, very wide walkway, which every temple to Apollo would have had. People like Flagler made their money in new technologies, and so they're huge technophiles. So the irony is he built this place and opened it in 1902, with all the latest technology, central heating, telephones, ele fully electrified, all the technology you could have in a home, and yet you could walk out the front door and turn right down and go down to where Worth Avenue is today and find Alligator Joe, who you could pay to watch him wrestle alligators, but he'd sell you land in Palm Beach too. Or you could walk out and turn to the left and find an ostrich farm. 
Polanco chose this location because when he visited this area in like 1891 or two, what he found was Lake, the Lake Worth area. We think of Palm Beach as an island. It's, it's only an island because the Army Corps of Engineers cut two inlets. For Henry Flagler, this was just the east side of Lake Worth. It wasn't until 1918, after Flagler's death, that Lake Worth Inlet was cut. In 1926, when the Boynton Inlet was cut, that we technically had an island. The west side was pretty much sand, and he, he looked at the area and thought, this looked like paradise to him. So he built the world, ended up building the world's largest resort on the east side of the lake and his home, Whitehall eventually, on the east side of the lake. And then on the west side, he laid out the city of West Palm Beach, named all the streets and attracted as many business people as he could. Be. He really thought West Palm Beach would one day become an incredible business center and a business city. And it's becoming that today. I think what's not understood about Flagler is just how important he is in Amer American business history. This was the legal mind behind the most profitable corporation in American history, and it remained so for more than a century. That's a record that's never going to be equaled. The Flaglers entertained during the winters at Whitehall until his death in 1913. After his wife died a few years later, Whitehall was left to Flagler's niece, who sold it to a group of investors. An 11-story tower was added to the home, turning the structure into a hotel. In 1959, Henry Flagler's granddaughter learned the building was in danger of being raised and she formed a nonprofit, the Henry Morrison Flagler Museum, to purchase the property. Whitehall has been open to the public ever since. The Flagler Museum is a major draw for Palm Beach. Over 100,000 people visit here from around the globe every year. The museum does have a national reputation and there are I would say the majority of people visiting this area who are interested in visiting historic sites uh, will seek us out and do seek us out. We hope Whitehall is something that Palm Beach can be proud of, that Florida can be proud of, and the United States can be proud of. It's part of our great American history in a time period when we really became who we are as Americans. I'm Sally Lewis reporting for Palm Beach TV. That wraps it up for us, and as always, we thank you for watching. You know, you can catch up with us anytime on our website or follow us on social media. And we'll see you next time right here on Palm Beach TV, a production of the Palm Beach Civic Association. Palm Beach TV is a production of the Palm Beach Civic Association. We thank our sponsor, the Fortin Foundation of Florida, and encourage you, our viewers, to let us know how we can provide news coverage that best serves our members and residents.